In the fifth year of my engagement with Willow, she secretly held a wedding with another man. When I arrived, they were passionately kissing amid the cheers of everyone. Seeing me, Willow laughed and said, he just wanted a wedding. Don't worry. We won't register for a marriage certificate. I didn't say a word, just turned around and left calmly. She thought I was fuming until another rich miss sent a picture of our marriage certificate, which shocked her. In spite of the heavy rain, Willow knocked on my door almost madly. When I opened the door, with a scornful smile on my face, I told her, Don't worry, I just got a marriage certificate, and I haven't had a wedding yet. As Anna descended the stairs in a black strapless dress, she hugged me from behind and asked, So what's our relationship? This was a lively wedding. The spectators were screaming for the couple to kiss. The man in the suit was shyly extending his, and Willa wrapped her arms around his neck and started kissing him deeply. I was watching them with sorrow. Willow's sister turned her head and saw me, and shouted in a panic, Brother-in-law. The next second, the once lively atmosphere became instantly quiet. I went to Willow. The groom tried to escape in confusion, but there was nowhere to go. Willow showed no shame on her face from being caught by her fiance. Makoto insisted on marrying me. Don't worry, we didn't get a marriage certificate, my husband can only be you. Willow and I have grown up together since we were children. We got engaged after graduation under the arrangement of our parents. She was a well-known promiscuous, always changing boyfriends constantly, which made me feel ashamed. I looked at her calmly, took a square ring box out of my bag and said, This is the ring your family gave when we got engaged. I'm giving it back to you. Willow took it over, laughed scornfully, and asked me, Did you take out the ring this time just to make me apologize? I saw the message in her eyes. It was disbelief. Willow, from today on, our engagement is null and void, and we have nothing to do with each other. Willow immediately became angry and said, Jorge, say it again. Her sister felt things were getting out of control and quickly said, Brother-in-law, please don't be angry. This wedding is fake. The real one my sister is going to marry will definitely be you. I didn't say a word, just turned around and left. Sis, you better go after him. Willow calmly said, No need. He's done this before. He'll be back after a few days, but you've never gone this far. As long as he's a man, he won't accept the person he loves getting married to someone else, I advise you to check on him. Willow gave a glance at the direction of the door. Her beautiful eyebrow slightly squinted, as if she was thinking about something. Makoto suddenly pulled her clothes and said, Can I see the ring? After leaving the wedding scene, I called my friend Martin and asked him to go to the bar for a drink. When he arrived, he saw that I had already drank two bottles of red wine and asked, What happened? Did you quarrel with Willow again? Did she find a celebrity or a male college student this time? Hearing this name, my heart was like a needle piercing back and forth, and I said, She got married today, after listening to the causes and consequences of this event. Martin said angrily, You should have broken up with her a long time ago. I told you before that she's not a good woman. Don't worry, I'll introduce you to a new, better girlfriend. I'm going to the restroom, in the corridor. A woman was wearing a dark professional skirt that was out of place here. She was leaning against the wall, her fair fingers holding a cigarette, and it seemed difficult to strike up a conversation. Perhaps she noticed I was looking at her, and she frowned and looked over here too. It turned out to be Anna. Why is she here? I walked over and asked, President Anna, could I borrow a cigarette? She arched her brows and replied, didn't you stop smoking after getting together with Willow? Aren't you afraid she find out you're smoking? I didn't say a word. She leaned closer and said, in a very annoying tone, I heard she had a wedding with another man today. Did you break up with her? I took the cigarette and the lighter she handed over. After lighting it skillfully, I exhaled a puff of smoke lightly and half-jokingly said, Anna, are you coming to my place tonight? Our eyes met. The words between adults were already very clear. Anna pinched out the cigarette and giggled. I suddenly remembered that she was not the casual type of woman and was about to explain. I didn't expect her to agree. As soon as I used my fingerprint to open the door of my house, I pressed her against the door the next second. I cupped the back of her head with my palm and started kissing her. Anna, you're too wild. Bite gently. She slightly furrowed her brow saying, Could you stop talking? What you should do is to make me speechless. A whole night of madness ravaged until my voice was somewhat hoarse. It didn't stop until the morning when my phone rang. 
I leaned on the bed contentedly, reaching out on the bed searching. There was a giggle from the side. Anna found the phone. When she saw it was a call from Willow, her face instantly turned unsightly. She handed the phone to me, and I answered. Willow laughed casually. Didn't you say we had nothing to do with each other yesterday? How come it's not even a day, and you went to talk bad about Makoto to my father? Who went to see your father? Are you crazy? Early in the morning, what are you doing at my place? The moment I opened my mouth, my husky voice caught her attention. Willow suspiciously asked, Do you have a cold? I smiled and said, what do you think? She realized the meaning of my words and suddenly raised her voice close to the phone. Where are you? Who are you with right now? President Liu, we are not related anymore. Where I am, who I am with, it's none of your business. I really didn't want to talk to her, so I hung up. In the bar, Willow looked unhappy. Her sister asked, Willow, did Jorge hang up on you? He's not really going to dissolve the engagement, is he? Several assistants disagreed. How is that possible? This is just his old trick to threaten Willow. If he really wants to dissolve the engagement, can he bear to? You can tell at a glance that he is pretending to be with another woman to make you jealous, wanting you to surrender first, and if you apologize now, you lose. Everyone started laughing, only then did Willow's face look a bit butter. My good mood was ruined by this call, I frowned. Anna, seeing this, said, What's so good about that Willow? She maintained improper relations with various men before marriage. And she's not likely to only love you after marriage. She doesn't deserve you. I looked up questioningly. Anna picked up the cigarette box from the bedside table, knocked out one and gave it to me. Her expression suddenly turned serious. If we talk about marriage alliance, our family is no worse than theirs. What are you trying to say? Anna said, I know you've always wanted to land that project in the East District but it won't be easy for you to do it alone. If we get married and collaborate, it will be much easier. I'm fully awake at this point. With their family's capabilities, they can totally nab it alone. Why would they want to collaborate with me? Perhaps because you did a great job last night and I'm very satisfied. She looked at me with a satisfied grin as if she had successfully plotted a scheme. I laughed lightly, pondered for a few seconds before stretching out my right hand saying, looking forward to our collaboration. Forty minutes later, I and Anna walked out of the door of the marriage registration department. Looking at the marriage certificate in my hand, I still felt as if I was dreaming. She suddenly said, let's go, huh? Meet the client now. Anna tittied up her hair and said with a smile, let's go for our honeymoon. We changed into our diving gear, submerged in the Azure Sea experiencing the mystery and beauty of the ocean. Surrounding us were beautiful corals and schools of fish that we could touch with our hands. Anna made a gesture to me, signaling me to follow her. Diving to a certain depth and looking up, it was like looking at a starry sky. After getting on shore, the staff told me my phone had been ringing nonstop. I checked my phone and there were dozens of unread messages. Hello Mr. Jorge, this is the manager of the suit shop. When would you be free to try on the suit? Hello Mr. Jorge, I am the person in charge of the wedding planning. What kind of flowers do you like? Hello, Mr. Jorge. Miss Liu has ordered a diamond ring from our shop. When would you be free to try it on? Suits, flowers, rings. The more I looked, the less I understood what was happening. Did my phone number get leaked? Just then, my phone rang again. I looked at the screen. It was showing a call from Willow. Hello, she demanded. Where have you been? I have called you so many times, you just don't pick up. Your company said you took a month's leave. Where I go has nothing to do with you. Don't forget we've already broken up. Willow didn't care. Instead, she laughed. Aren't you just angry because I organized a wedding for Makoto? I will organize one for you as well. You should have received some messages and calls. See what you like. Just tell them. They will arrange everything. I yelled. Are you mentally ill? Even though I couldn't see her expression, I could imagine what Willow would look like on hearing this. Jorge. You want to break up with me because of a wedding, and now I'm agreeing to hold another one for you. What more do you want? I tell you, this is the only chance. If you don't want to get married, then never get married. Willow is always like this, as long as she apologizes to you. If you don't accept immediately, then you are the unreasonable one. You're crazy. We have broken up. Don't call me again. Whoever you want to marry, marry. Willow on the other side of the phone was so angry she couldn't speak. Jorge. I gave you a chance, this is your own refusal, don't regret. Anna changed her clothes, asked, 
Was it Willow's call? I inhaled and said, Hum. She thought I was upset for a wedding, so she also wanted to hold a wedding with me. How did I ever fall for her in the first place? Anna smiled and said nothing. In the following month, we went to Iceland to see the mysterious blue ice caves, took a hot air balloon ride in Turkey. On the day I returned to the country, Martin asked me out for drinks at KTV. I glanced at the bite marks fading on my neck from last night's session with Anna, grabbed a jacket from the wardrobe, and put it on. As soon as he took a seat, he downed to shots of alcohol, spewing angrily. Damn it. Willow is absolutely mad. She hired all the electronic screens on every skyscraper in the capital, got a list celebrities to record birthday greetings for that Makoto. She even wants it to be broadcast repetitively for a month. Cupping my glass, I replied palmly, I'm already married. He initially didn't believe it, but upon seeing my marriage certificate, he conceded, Anna, how did you end up with her? But there's no need to tell me. Willow isn't even comparable to her. I really want to see what her reaction would be when she finds out about your marriage with Anna. His anger dissipated, and he said cheerily, This calls for a celebration, my treat for tonight. Martin is a poor drinker, and after a few drinks he was already dizzy. I put down my glass, you just behave Van stay here, I'll step out for a while and order some tea to sober you up. In the corridor, I ran into Liliana, she ran up to me in a fraternal way, saying, Brother-in-law, you're here, my sister is in room 6. I reply, I have nothing to do with Willow now, just call me by my name in the future, you guys have fun. Liliana thought I was just holding a grudge. My sister, Willow, indeed went too far this time, just give her a chance to apologize to you in person. We will indulge in room 6 first, brother-in-law, be sure to head over, on my way back to my room. I would pass by room 6, as I was passing, I heard a familiar voice, standing at the door. I threw the gap in the door. Willow was lazily leaning onto the sofa, with Makoto pouring wine for her on the side. Liliana said to her, Sis, I just ran into bother-in-law outside. He definitely still loves you. I didn't expect Jorge could resist contacting you for such a long time. Another friend of Willow spoke. Just a month. It must be because he heard about Willow planning another man's birthday. He's just a concerned about it. Willow coldly said, Who let him come? We are already broken up enough. Isn't this the first time Jorge didn't contact you for such a long? Yeah. Sister Willow, I think you better send Makoto away swiftly, in case brother-in-law gets angry again. With this, Willow glanced at the Makoto beside her. He lowered his head, saying weakly, Willow, today is my birthday. I took off my jacket and pushed the door open. Everyone's gaze turned synchronously onto me. The love bites on my neck was too obvious even under the dim lighting of the bar. Willow saw it. She immediately stood up, squinting her eyes. She demanded, What's that on your neck? Thinking about the night's mark Anna intentionally left on me, I laughed and reply, It's a love bite. Willow slammed her wine glass onto the table, her eyes blazing with anger. Who did this? Jorge, you've really been finding women behind my back. How? Who did it has nothing to do with you? Willow. A qualified ex should be as quiet as a dead person, offering no opinion. She smirked, Jorge, if I ever contact you again, I'm a dog. When I returned to my room, Martin had sobered up after his tea, and asked me, Why did you go for so long? I almost went looking for you. I shrug off the matter and told him, just went to handle some business. If not there will always be flies buzzing around me, which is quite irritating. Let's go. Both of us had drunk too much, so we called for a designated driver to take us home. It wasn't long before, the male college student who married Willow graduated and entered the entertainment industry. After a small achievement, he even hired people to slander my reputation on the internet. Lee was different with Makoto. She was willing to hold a wedding with him. Speaking of the wedding, Liu even gave him a luxury car. The shameless person is the one who is not loved and insists on obstructing the love between two sincere people. The assistant asked, President Jorge, should we guide public opinion a bit? I said, find some negative news about Makoto and inform the journalists, then notify the media companies cooperating with us that they are not allowed to work with him. Okay, President Jorge, I will do it right away. What if President Liu helps him? Don't worry about her, you just need to complete the tasks I assign you. An hour later, netizens began to curse Makoto. You are a villain who intrudes on other people's feelings. 
Sneaking around is one thing, but how dare you openly provoke the original partner? I was in the same class as Makoto, he looked honest on the surface, but actually, he bullied me in school because he was rich, I have many burn scars on my arm caused by him. I am Makoto's assistant, there was a scene that required retrieving something underwater. He thought the water was too dirty and demanded the workers change the entire lake water to pure water. I think the most hateful person is Willow, changing boyfriends every few days. Such women are so disgusting. Sis, aren't you going to answer your boyfriend's call? He's nearly being condemned to death by netizens now. Willow didn't respond to this query from Liliana. Instead, she asked, has Jorge been calling you guys these past few days? No, was the swift chorus from everyone around. Liliana Fire, another question. Are you purposefully turning Makoto into a celebrity to piss off Jorge? I don't think you will succeed. Your relationship with Makoto is already public knowledge and Jorge has not called you because of this. Perhaps you should apologize and give him a call if you truly want to be with Jorge. It doesn't he hurt to try. And what if someone else gets to him first? Well, he can do as he pleases. If he wants to break up, then let it be. I don't need him as a boyfriend. That night, I got a message from Martin. That's right, I forgot to mention the other night. There's a rumor going around in the circle that Anna likes women. It can't be true, can it? I got a strange kick out of reading that message. Just as I was about to reply, a voice sounded from next to me. I like women. I looked into Anna's puzzled eyes and was at a loss for words, she said. Then let's see tonight. Whether I like men or women, by the time I came to my senses, I was already lured into bed by Anna. I don't know if it was because of the alcohol, but I found Anna exceptionally beautiful today, at the peak of sensation. She propped up her body and bit my shoulder. Outside the window, the heavy rain fell like a waterfall. Inside the room, the heat of love spread like flames. After a round, the cell phone on the bedside table kept ringing. Anna picked it up and had a look, then asked, It's Willow, do you want to answer it? I shook my head. No. Jorge, she's sticking to you like chewing gum. It makes me uncomfortable, I said. Then you pick up the call. I don't know if it was my illusion, but I seemed to sense a look of triumphant strategy in her. Just as the call was answered, Willa's drunken voice came from the other end. Jorge, I've drunk too much. Come man pick me up. Why are you not caring about me anymore? Anna sarcastically said. It's me. The other side of the phone was quiet for a few seconds. Then I heard Willow angrily shouting, Anna, do you have no shame? You actually ruined our relationship. You are the third party in our relationship. No, we are legally married. On the contrary, I have to ask you, what are you calling my husband for in the middle of the night? Impossible, she screamed in fear. Jorge, will you come man pick me out? Can we make up? I took over the phone and said, Willow, my wife has already made it very clear to you that you are just my ex. Anna held me satisfactorily and planted a kiss on my face. Without giving Willow a chance to speak, I hung up the phone directly. On the other side, in the bar, Willow held a pose since hanging up the phone. The assistants and followers around her tried to console her. I think this time Jorge is really not going to come back. Actually, you can't blame him. You've really gone too far these past years. If I were Jorge, I would have left you long ago. Just let it go. Anyway. You don't like Jorge at all. Without saying a word, Willow picked up the car keys and left. No one around her could catch up. She can't drive after drinking. What to do? She's out of sight. Jorge, I want to announce our relationship and post it on social media, said Anna. At this moment, Anna is highly attractive, a complete contrast to her usual self. I unconsciously nodded dot dot just one minute after posting. There were many comments. Congratulations, you finally succeeded. But does Jorge know you have liked him for so many years? Oh my god, isn't this guy Willow's fiancé? What's going on? Congratulations, congratulations. Anna replied a few comments, then happily went to the bathroom to take a bath. Hearing the urgent knocking on the door downstairs, I guessed who it was, so I took out the marriage certificate from the cabinet and wrapped myself in a bath towel before going downstairs. I opened the door with a satisfied smile on my face. Willow was soaked by the rain whimpering. Jorge, I won't be like this in the future. Let's get back together. I didn't think much at that time. It's just a wedding. Nothing important. I just thought it was fun. So I agreed. I leaned against the door frame and showed her the marriage certificate in my hand. I've registered for marriage. 
Only the wedding is left. Make sure to attend the banquet when we have our wedding. Anna, dressed in a black sling dress, came down from upstairs and nestled in my arms. Hum, so what is our relationship? I looked at her, then looked at Willow with a sarcastic smile, and said, You are my wife. Willow gritted her teeth and cursed. it. I thought of you as my best female friend, but you are the third party between us. Anna laughed as if she had heard something funny. How many disgusting things have you done, and aren't you aware of it? He has put up with you for five years. How did you trample on his feelings for you during these five years? Willow stood in the rain, her eyes most. Jorge, I'm drunk. Could you send me home? Anna cursed and slammed the door. She pinned me against the door. Outside was the sound of Willow frantically knocking on the door. Jorge, when are we getting married? I want a title, when you two got engaged. It was such a grand event. I want our wedding to be even better. I kissed her on the lips and said, Okay, the next day, I received a call from Liliana. She told me that Willow had crashed into the guardrail, and she went home last night. The entire front of the car was smashed, but she was still alive and is now in the hospital. Brother-in-law, I'm sorry. Jorge, can you come and see her? She isn't eating or drinking, and she's not cooperating with the doctors to take her medication. She insists on seeing you. How many phone numbers do you have? Liliana blurted out. Just this one. I hung up the call and immediately blocked her phone number. Willow got into trouble and didn't find her parents or her current boyfriend, but sought me, her already married ex-fiancé. Liliana showed her phone to her sister. Sis, Jorge really doesn't want you anymore. He even blocked my number now. Willow stared at the chat box and couldn't say a word. Later, she left the hospital when no one was around. One day, I went back to the apartment to get documents and saw Willow sitting in the flowered bed downstairs of the community, wearing her hospital gown. She saw me and walked over cautiously and called out, Jorge. I tiredly answer, what do you want to do? Perhaps due to her illness, she looked a bit weak and said, Anna did it on purpose. She had her eyes on you a long time ago. She wanted us to break up and then she became the third person. Do you remember when we were in school? Someone put a love letter in your bag and you were very angry. That person was Anna. What? During school, Anna kept her distance from everyone. Everyone only dared to quietly discuss her behind her back. No one dared to approach her for contact information. Was the love letter in my school bag actually put there by Anna? She's just jealous that we got engaged. So she deliberately framed me. So... You're saying she forced you to date Makoto. Was it her who forced you to hold a wedding ceremony? Willow didn't know how to respond. So she changed the subject and said, I caught a cold standing in the rain last night. I'm feeling very uncomfortable right now. Can I go upstairs to take a drink of water? I'm sorry, but I'm already married. I took out my phone and called her father. All right, I'm coming over right now. Upon arrival, he angrily slapped her. What are you still doing here? It's too embarrassing, looking at the things you've done before. I can't even face George's parents anymore. Leave now. Uncle, I have a few important meetings to attend to later, so I'll go ahead. Go ahead. I will take her away immediately. I nodded politely and turned to leave, unexpectedly. When I returned, Willow was still sitting here. She was dressed in a flimsy patient's gown, attracting the gaze of passersby. She didn't care and just stared at the entrance of the community. When she saw my car coming in, she immediately stood up. I took a deep breath. I wanted to go straight past her, but when I started walking forward, she stopped me and took out the ring box I hadn't returned. I've never thought about giving this ring to anyone else. Can you take it back? I smiled and opened my phone to find a self-portrait of Makoto wearing this ring. Willow quickly explained. This was after you left that day. He said he wanted to see it so I gave it to him. He just tried it on. I didn't want to waste time with her, so I shook off her hand and went upstairs. When Nana came back, I saw them arguing from upstairs. I hurried downstairs. Willow said, Anna, you are not a good person either. Do you dare to tell Jorge all the things you've done? Part of the reason why I cheated was because of you. And the project in the East District was also your scheme. Jorge, you must not be tricked by her. Anna nervously glanced at me. I took her hand and held it tightly. I also passed the wedding candy to Willow. The 8th of next month is the day, and Nana and I get married. You are welcome to attend our wedding. Back in the room, Anna was still lost in thought. It was the first time I've seen her like this. She explained. What Willow said was partly true. 
I knew you wanted that project in the East District, so I deliberately used it as an excuse to marry you. Her affair was also arranged by me. I found a bow that fit her type and indirectly sent him to her. I'm not as good as you think. I'm very good at calculating people's hearts. I smiled and said, I know very well what kind of person Willow is. Even without you, she would soon get tired of that lifestyle after marriage and will eventually have an affair. Anna paused and asked me, you don't blame me. I laughed lightly and said, of course, I do not blame you because I also thought it through deeply before I married you. Only children would only consider love and not reality. Anna gradually relaxed. The East District project is underway. The preparations for my wedding with Anna are also in progress. One day, I was struggling with whether to use all chocolates for the wedding candy or to mix various types of candies. A notification popped up on my phone that read, Your friend is live streaming. I clicked in curiously. Willow was kneeling on the ground in a miserable state, and I could vaguely see that the knee of her pants was torn. She took a step, knelt down, kneeled one step, then said, I'm sorry, Jorge. This reminded me of when we first started dating. She said, if I ever cheat one day, I'll kneel every step of the way to Laotian. Seeing such a crazy scene, I didn't know what to say. I happily took out my phone and gave her a like. After all, there weren't many times when I could see the president of Liu's company in such an ugly state. The audience commented one after another. It's meaningless to show deep affection so late. What's the point of putting on this appearance when you didn't cherish when you were together? Didn't you change bow friends every few days before? George's current wife is much prettier than Willow. Long legs and a small waist. Have you seen her? I imagined it myself. I looked at the woman in the video. If you really want to go up to Laotian like this, it will take at least one day and one night. More importantly, it's too embarrassing. She kept saying that she's sorry to Jorge. Liliana called me. Jorge, although Willow has wronged you, she's still having a fever and her body hasn't recovered yet. Can't you pity her and give her a call? You have the time to call me. Why not take a few people over there, knock her out and take her directly to the hospital, without considering how others look at her? Willow knelt down with every step she took. She didn't answer any calls. She didn't listen to anyone's persuasion. When Liliana and others went, they could do nothing but let her proceed with it. Willow didn't make it to the top until the next evening. Exhausted, she fainted and was taken away by the doctors. When I received her father's phone call, I was discussing the wedding details with my father. I'm sorry, but I really can't face you. However, right now Willow just wants to see you. No one else can convince her. My dad asked me to pass the phone to him. My son is getting married now and it's not convenient to go see your daughter. How about this? I'll let my daughter-in-law go. They knew each other and were good friends before. Perhaps that might work. Willow's father sighed and said, oh, if Anna came, she would probably be infuriated. Let's forget about it. It won't happen. There's this theory. Only a more potent poison can cure a tough poison. Let's just settle on that. I'll have Anna come over in a bit. In the hospital, I was waiting outside the war, seeing Anna, Willow sadly said, Anna, I didn't expect to be trapped by you. From the beginning, I fell into your trap pan I could never get out. Who can you blame when you can't control yourself? That's also because you set traps for me everywhere. Without you, Jorge and I wouldn't have ended up this way. I went out for a walk, not listening to their conversation afterward. I don't know what Anna said to her. In the following few days, Willow did not appear in front of me. But Makoto suddenly found me. Jorge can I talk to you? His head was down and his voice was very low when he spoke. Makoto was silent for a long time, and just as I couldn't wait any longer and was about to stand up and leave, he finally spoke, Miss Liu is pregnant. I took a drink of coffee and reply, what do you mean by coming to me, Mr. Makoto? The child in her stomach can't be mine, can it? Makoto raised his head in surprise, of course the child is mine, but she doesn't want this child, can you go persuade her? I can give up anything, I can even return everything she gave me before. As long as she is willing to give birth to this child. Mr. Makoto, you have found the wrong person. I, as her ex-fiance, have no reason to talk to her about this, and you don't need to put on this act in front of me. You certainly know which one is more in your favor, having Willow giving birth to your child or keeping what Willow had given you. Makoto suddenly knelt on the ground, but now her heart tan eyes are all on you. If it weren't for you, she might give birth to this child. 
All of her friends say that I'm special, and only I can make her marry me, right? She once gave me a red string bracelet, which means companionship for life. Doesn't this mean that I'm a special person to her? I laughed, because for Willow, there were too many special people. Many people have been her special person. Mr. Makoto, if I remember correctly, many people have received the red string bracelet from her. Makoto couldn't believe it. Impossible. You're lying to me. Everyone says that I'm the person who has spent the longest time with her. You must be lying to me. Did Willow ever promise you that she would only give this bracelet to you alone? Makoto opened his mouth, but found that he couldn't argue. See, she can't even be bothered to lie to you. Makoto wanted to say something else. I interrupted him, Mr. Makoto, I hope that in the future you will not appear in front of me, nor come to the company to find me, because we really aren't familiar. Assistant, show him out. The day of the wedding was sunny and beautiful. Friends were all present. Someone said, congratulations. I originally thought you would marry Willow, but you ended up marrying. Martin stopped him angrily and responded, today is George's wedding day. Why are you talking nonsense here? I think Anna is much better than Willow. Martin disliked Willow a long time ago and didn't want to hear her name on such an occasion. Sorry. Sorry. I laughed and didn't pay attention. Please sit down first. The wedding is about to start. The venue was decorated in a Chinese style and was breathtaking. The wedding dress was specially made. The gown was embroidered with golden phoenixes. She wore a phoenix crown on her head. And her makeup was stunning. The ceremony ended perfectly. Our families were very happy and offered all kinds of blessings. Anna had just changed into her toe suit and saw Liliana coming over. Liliana gave me the Budo beads that Willow had retrieved from Mount Lao. Now my sister regrets it so much. She said that if she could do it again, she would definitely cherish you. Liliana kept talking nonstop. She didn't notice the look on Anna's face. I laughed and separated the two. After a busy day, when we got home, Anna lay on the bed and let me take off her clothes. In the bathroom, the mist blurred our eyes. I hugged her waist and, before she could react, kisses were falling all over her.